love came in and thawed my heart After a winter so cold it left me frozen inside You sang a song that unraveled me The melody was enough to rewrite my story Love came in and thawed my heart After a winter so cold it left me frozen inside You sang a song that unraveled me The melody was enough to rewrite my story Hello, everybody, and welcome back to twitch.tv slash willwalkie. That's me. I'm Will. You're here. I appreciate you being here. I've been away for a minute. Uh, I was on my honeymoon, actually. I was in Europe. Uh, we spent two weeks traipsing around London and Paris and Munich, uh, and it was an absolute blast. And that is why I haven't been around for a little bit. Uh, so I hope you didn't miss me too much. I missed you guys, but uh, ultimately had a lot of fun and I'm glad to be home. Uh, so tonight, what we've got in store is we are going to play the game. Uh, I, what, shoot, I have, I had this title. Okay, I love you, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. I don't know if you guys, you're shaking your head. You don't look excited. Amanda, my wife, of course, just off screen. Uh, they can't hear you. That's no. correct. So I will relay to them. Weird. She says it's very weird, and I agree, and that's why I'm excited about it, uh, is because it is undoubtedly a weird thing. Um, KFC contracting uh, developer PSYOP to go out and create a dating simulator anime style for their uh their spokesman and mascot colonel sanders um not the rob riggle one mm -hmm. i would have i would have been excited for that but instead an anime heartthrob 
Colonel Sanders. But I mean, this is kind of the weird thing that everyone's doing now, because Wendy's just put out a uh, tabletop RPG just the other day. Uh, we've got this game. I mean, I'm sure there are other things that I I didn't preload and prep for. But weird stuff seems to generate buzz right now. So I mean, Wendy's also famously has their savage Twitter handle that uh, just roasts people. So um, I don't know. It's it's just weird marketing, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the game. Uh, I want to remind everyone that you are. That's right. There was the the Sneak King, which was an Xbox game uh, by Burger King, where you played the king, and it was like um, it was kind of like a Metal Gear Solid or a Splinter Cell. Uh, it was a um, stealth game and you were the king and you had to uh pop out of places and give people whoppers and like if you surprised them i think you got more points or something i never played that game but i saw it a lot maybe i have to fish out a copy of that and try it sometime um yeah so i guess this isn't that new of a thing this has been going on for a bit for a bit uh good call shout out to uh yukito6361 in the chat for bringing that up uh but that's enough talking about that uh i think i'm just gonna hop right into the game uh i just want to remind everyone uh this is twitch.tv slash willwalkie when i am not uh across the pond i am here every wednesday and sunday 8 p.m central playing games a uh, big one that i've been playing a lot recently has been uh, paper mario the thousand year door I will probably pick up with that one this coming Wednesday uh, for my community choice. My community choice has, uh, or my community, I should say, has resoundingly said they like Paper Mario. So for for the foreseeable future, Wednesdays will be Paper Mario nights. Uh, and then Sundays are my choice, 8 p.m. Central, twitch.tv slash Milwaukee. Uh, did I say that enough yet? I don't know if you guys know how you got here. But um, I play what I want to play, which apparently today, I don't know how you got here either, which apparently today is this weird, wonderful, I love you, Colonel Sanders game. Uh, and then I'm also on the Pop Samurai crew, twitch.tv slash Pop Samurai Network. Uh, that happens Thursdays at 7 Central. Uh, <laughs> have you played this game yet, Samurs? Because this is going to be blind for me. I'm going into it. Hopefully no spoilers, uh, and we'll see how it goes. I heard it takes about an hour. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, Thursdays, twitch.tv slash Pop Samurai Network, 7 p.m. We do all sorts of weird stuff. We play games. We create ranking lists. We talk news. Uh, let's see. Uh, I recently played the Shia LaBeouf uh, tabletop RPG. Amanda was in that one. That was a lot of fun. Go back into those videos and check that out. But I highly recommend, if you're free on Thursday, checking that out. Uh, no, have you played I Love You, Colonel Sanders? Uh, because that is the game I'm about to start up right now. And why don't I go and set that up? Uh, let's, let's put with the jabber. You can keep talking while... Oh, right. Come back. Here we go. Here we go. It is a game, and it's weird, and we're going to give it a go, if this works. There it is. Okay. I don't have audio? Oh, yeah. Oh. No, this is not dumb. This is amazing. I was contemplating getting chicken for this playthrough, but I decided... Well, just with the honeymoon and everything. Oh my god, it's so majestic. Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, just with just with the honeymoon and just getting back and not wanting to go out. We didn't actually get a bucket of chicken. Uh, but we, we thought about it. I will admit that I, I really... Uh, this, where has it been your whole life? Well, it came out on September 24th. Uh, so it hasn't been out for very long. 
Um, but yes, I agree. This is the thing I didn't know that I needed in my life. Go with my room. Why not? Oh, the animation is really good. <laughs> like, in that opening trailer and now all this, it's just... It's good. <laughs> it looks like they spent a lot of time on this. Which I love. Oh my gosh. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in! Uh, I'm gonna stay in bed forever. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Did I just lose? Yes! I've lost! Thank you, everyone! Thank you for tuning in to twitch.tv slash Milwaukee. That was I Love You, Colonel Sanders. And good night! No, they're not, they're not buying it. No. Okay, okay, they're not buying it. Alright, we'll try this again. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's uh, taken, you know, numbers on what the fastest way to beat this game is, but I think I just won. Alright, let's try that again. I will settle for nothing but perfection uh, in my aim to win the heart of Colonel Sanders. Okay, world is peaceful and serene, could wake up, blah blah blah. Up and at him! Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. They even got bad parody translation in. I like it. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. Uh, and, uh, I need to take this seriously. I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. Bust through your morning checklist, teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. Confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. And it's, of course, a KFC biscuit. And it's steamy. Look at that. Props for the animated steam. Then the... Every couple of moments, I'm just reminded how ridiculous this is. Like, I, I get it. I start to get into it. Uh, and, and I'm like, okay, this is really good. This is really impressive. And then I remember what I'm playing. Uh, standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Aw, Hawaii. The most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Will. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am! Excited? A little nervous? Okay, okay, a lot nervous! What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but... Oh. When I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Oh, she's... Oh. Classic Miriam. Raised by the Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do <laughs> great. But with University of Cooking School <laughs> Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. It's, it's fair. It's fair. 
A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first chi her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oh no. Um, let's change this. It's hard to see Miriam like this, and frankly, quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, you try to change the subject to something more interesting. All summer you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, enigmatic mystery student who is enrolled at this school. Who could this gallant individual be? Yeah, that's a little worrisome, but you'll be fine! And what about this mystery student we read about on the school message board? Any new deets? Look at this, I heard his name is Harland, and he's no ordinary student. Is that true? Har Colonel Harlan Sanders? They say he has powers! He's had them ever since he was born from an egg! What? An egg? Like a chicken? Don't be ridiculous! That thing about having powers, it would line up with some of the other rumors I've heard. Like, I heard he once fought a bear with just his smile. You both sigh, thinking about a student so handsome that the laws of physics don't dare apply to him. Dreamy. Or you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival, with a very pointy tooth and certainly non-regulation cooking clothing. She's... T <laughs> wow! She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. She definitely has drumsticks on her stockings. On her drumsticks? Yes. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Will's shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. Ashley. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone know here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. <laughs> We're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us! Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Madman, <laughs> has, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie. They're rockin' glutes. Van Van! You rang rang. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. That is not a shirt. That's an- that is an ensemble. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a thing- learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Uh. See you later, losers! As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What? <laughs> Oopsie. I think it's broken! Reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. 
I love you! I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop! I was after my Pop Pop! He's old! Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Uh, hi, Pop. I'm Will. So... Are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kinda cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of class. Adorable! I mean, I, I want to just bark for this. I don't think... Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof! That's right, he's he's been the narrator the whole time. Twist. Story twist. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Page turn! Yes, it's, it's very dense text. It's all packed together. Out of nowhere, wind begins to run to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Very unsanitary! I'm chilly! Someone close the window! And then... He walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <laughs> doki doki doki. I'm getting doki vibes as well, for sure. I, uh, I hope I don't have to modify my file system to finish this game. It's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Holland... Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Sorry, Professor Dog. I had to take another run at that before he can finish his sentence. Please... Call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. Hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong! And this mu over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot! Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world! The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. 
you will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish! Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable! Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels! Turn to see the student Sprinkles is, refer is, is referencing, <laughs> who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Work. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what? I think I know the answer to this one. Reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student! Furry Professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. Sorry, I gotta... Rehydrate. As everyone rushes to claim the favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Will, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Uh... Sit back up, man. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. You've only had two rules. Do all you can, and do it the best you can. The only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. arms get like way bigger that's so inspiring so inspiring a little off topic if you ask me but okay as soon as you've settled into your seat the professor makes an announcement think fast it's time for a pop quiz <laughs> yay a quiz about me this incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper! Here comes question number one! If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? 
extremely. Right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to oh. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? That sounds like fun. I'm going to say a sport. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Pancake that looks like a silly face. Camel meat? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and love. Sprinkles a good boy? He's the best boy. He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He's the best boy! Your total score is perfect score. Five out of five. Be honest, did you cheat? Look up to see him watching you tally your score. He is impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, Will! You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance! Yeah. Yeah, be jealous. Everyone. Internet, be jealous. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow! The cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? It must be our lunch! It smells crazy good! Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You, you see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh! Lunch, lunch, lunch! She said shh. Honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone. Lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled! Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you. Why oh, I had trouble with that. And you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. Ooh, we noticed that, uh, I'm starting to give away the secrets. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison! Got him! He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. He has star hair. It took me a minute, but I just noticed. He has star hair. You wait to see what zinger Ashley, a -ash -ash Ashley, Ashley 
has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking. Like this, she wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Oh, Van Van the Man Man, you don't want any. I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. Takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts control contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. Take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket. Sink your teeth. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus my mind and meditate on this moment, trying to identify every flavor. I can savor the moment, everything that it tells me about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart, or I can swim toward the light. I think I'm going to savor the moment. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful. Pure, heavenly. What a guy! Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Colonel, Sa <laughs> Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly at the approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything, fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. It's the rush. The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone. And then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use blank. Blank? Wow! You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. While well, you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to... You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Great. Totally normal. Oh, it's you then. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school building. Think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. 
something better. Alone together for the first time, figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed it. Now you've gotten his attention. The flavors were complex, but the interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking area, arena, where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Oh boy, it's a cooking show. Hey, what's up, Jabberjock? Welcome. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a second. Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn. Signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena! For today's lesson we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, Will. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! Beep boop. Bzzz. Oh my! Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know how to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward. But that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. <laughs> that's dark. That is some dark meat, KFC. You want to ask to be Miriam's partner. Sticker with. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate! It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Issue? I hardly know you! <laughs> Blank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright you two, for today's lesson we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island, it takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you su suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Mashed potatoes. Always been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? 
I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking, partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Ugh, no. Jeez, Van Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Will's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh. Howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looks like Will was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Winky face. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Hmm. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class. Let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sh Sanders chose me. Is that right? Businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts to handshakes. Took on Will as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect. Neither of you has Will's natural talent or their loyalty. Boom! Better turn down the heat, Colonel Sanders. And burn our potatoes. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves out and full of potential. Look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute pogies and their short but sturdy stature. Look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato. Gravy 
Those down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Franny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. For that, mo for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork pull up when you see Ashley with a sinister look. You know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face! Van Van! Do something! Do something! Scooping up a finger fill, finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Will. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato space? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. That's pretty metal. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite. You will all look on with envy. Inter interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the... No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't quite strike my nose right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moment. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. Last bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by all by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Aw, oh, come on! Follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. Night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. 
Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class. Before you go on, I, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food in life. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to me, in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him your developing feelings. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Will? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen! And every day since, I've been working towards that dream. Day and night. Never stopping. Never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I... You... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story! Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! Hmm... Hey, also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him! We're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero! The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero! Ah! I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Lighter nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be afraid! Of me! Cause I'm a monster! See? Are you rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? Close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage, but I have no HP, so... Cook with love does one damage. Ouch. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here! Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens! Pot Pie Power Pinch! Hot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage! Spork Monster is defeated! You saved me! Injured Spork Monster spews steam high into the night.
manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize it's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! And don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow! Oh, foreshadowing. I won't forget this! I certainly won't be back like you said! The spork monster scuttles off into the The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more! It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Open the cover and find a library card tucked in. The last name to have signed it out is Orko. Orko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hand. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Oh. Sleepy. It's the character. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tight. Good night. Your dream, you, together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Oh, look at everything. Wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? Then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? Probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. Meet up with your bestie in front of the school. At this point... <clears throat> sorry, voices. At this point, I'm going to take a quick uh, couple minute break. Because I am so intrigued by this story that I just need to take a second to step back and move on. Uh, also, I definitely need to go to the bathroom and wash my hands. So, uh, thank you everyone for hanging out. If you have to run, I understand. But please, please, I urge you to stick around as we get to day two of I Love You, Colonel Sanders. I will be right back. Bye, everyone.
All right. Hi, everyone. I am back. Uh, just like I said, got up to take a quick break. If you're still hanging out, thank you for being here. Twitch.tv slash Willwalkie. Tell your friends, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Let's get back into this. Day two of I Love You, Colonel Sanders. A finger licking good dating simulator. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Can't. All right. Also, I'm eating ice cream now because my voice hurts. Ow. Or rather, being fed ice cream. Because my wife rocks. Really hard to do that and just like it. Sorry, mm. it's hard to eat ice cream and get like right back into it. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Wrong tone. That's that felt a little too menacing. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but. I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank! Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him! <laughs> we got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a high school he didn't even go to. It was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the- wait, what? So popular voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to, and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. At least part of that sounds made up. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, you're a thing now. You definitely can. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. Have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me. The flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. 
Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. Besides, I only know the one ingredient. If I doubt it'd be much use in. Please, please, please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. on a horse. I apologize for not narrating right now, by the way. I'm eating ice cream. All right, and with that, that whole episode of getting kicked in the face, because I'm a big dumb, and with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Culinary schools to be respected! This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the Emperor of Cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. It doesn't hurt to use a little evil. Finally get a look at what, what, what it was they were hiding. You instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book they found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. 
notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got pop pins to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth! We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. Almost time for class. Beep beep. Blank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <gasps> hey, watch it, you bucket of balls. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. <laughs> No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse. Right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I've spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it! Sprinkles stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders! Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down! Aftoppen! That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken! You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. You miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Will? Naturally, this appears to you to be a simple a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talents, perhaps? Reach out for it when... Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron! What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. Oh. Fade into darkness. Something is there. The spork monster? Sporko? What are you doing here? Not your time, Will. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. Watch as your apron magically repairs itself. Won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. 
Thank you, my friend, whatever you are. Which item do you want to sample? Brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out to grab it and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat! The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. Feels like forever as you trip through the universe. And oh, this guy again, here to give you an important message, oh, you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny, all you must do is, <coughs> saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is, <coughs> sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat, it's fine, I'll work through, <coughs> to fulfill, <coughs> The prophecy- <clears throat> You must- You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw oh, man! Come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth and now it's gone forever! Think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes, I'm sure I'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the, the cafeteria lights dim. Your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Guys, lunch will be prepared. Be a timed, competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Do need a meow, that's correct. Bit of lunchtime competition, huh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. Ah! I'm not the fool, you're the fool, fool! Good one, Van Van. I like your gum. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkles steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Sportsing court. Nice. Finally, a little sense. Breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Oh, just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Aroo! I stand correct. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. That's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure and now's my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. Had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. You're feeling like you could really impress him again here. Time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast, if the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Ooh, nice. Going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. Don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Tail wagging intensifies. Awesome. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft.
Oh no! Was it? I think it was silence, yeah, actually. Wow. See sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops and box onto the dish. I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Ugh. I was gonna ask Will to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese, croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry galee. Jelly? Yikes. Sometimes I, uh, I just shouldn't narrate. <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed. He dips his finger in the chocolate. Hmm. Felicity is a strong suit, is it, Ash? <gasps> oh, you! <laughs> As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something Ab of sauce six, sticks to his mouth. Wow, that's quite a thing. Beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. Won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. Man, they really hit the the anxiety and self-doubt pretty hard here. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. Fine! Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser! I'm not fit to fill your fryer! I'll never be a master chef! Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. I think I've never failed at anything before? Exactly what I think. And think again. It wasn't always the man you see before you in a golden culinary school, incredibly 
successful, motivated. <laughs> Amanda just made a farty noise as I read that. <laughs> oh, handsome, sure, I was... I've walked other paths and I have to dead end. Passionate about life! I failed as an ob obstetrician. Yeah, I'm gonna get there. The big word to just throw right right at you. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. Passionate about livestock. I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. This can be so cool. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. I survived. While I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now. It, always, it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from, from giving the best I had to give. Colonel Sanders changes focus. You can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion! One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle-scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst! It's the Spork Monster! Orko? It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back. After the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Borko. Glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. Also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack. I know you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. Believe it, you were human once? Oh, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. So one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast the dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. Magic spell book. Precisely! I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it! If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it! You're a powerful chef, and I shouldn't rely on such dark magic and evil magic! No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile! If you need me, don't fear, I will be there! Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Will, together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Yeah, because his crib is dope. Looks like you live so <laughs> The baby has a beard. <laughs> That's awesome and adorable. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. 
Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and texture. Not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm curious. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Oh, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Did you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Set. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. Shredded cabbage which glistens the light of Colonel Sanders Lux. <gasps> Magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw till just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later. Think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental. Sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. Realize now that now you realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Found the room of various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate. Memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the current. Silver hair woven through the teeth of the comb. On further inspection, you realize the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. Notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real! Axonermy? It's been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's blank. Gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range. Then the ghost of student pops up. Thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see him in the middle of something? Open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a broom. Brutal. I'm trying to hold off on the baby beard. Oh. Saving the best for last. Take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. Ooh, that time she yawned. That wasn't me. I mean, I also yawned. She did first. Okay, I've been yawning this whole time. We're still a little jet lagged on the trip, if I'm being honest. But that explains it. Take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. A plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. Think for a moment. What number is important to Colonel Sanders? It dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 111.11, the safe opens. 
Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Ew! Framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks, appear to be cheersing them. Not in this photo. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. Wonder who my friend Pete is. Odo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices? Open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. Take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. Give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Oh no! I missed the baby! Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. There's a new dish that he's been working on and he wants you to taste it. <laughs> I'm so sorry! You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. Don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off. Oh, but I can't let it get in the way of my dreams. Colonel Sanders, no! Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Will? I honestly think this may be the beginning of some. I think you're right. You should take things slow. Talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. You make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life! Think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, blank isn't even legal! But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. Holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. Taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. Turn, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect man? How presumptuous! My cuisine and your taste buds. Such confidence, such grace! Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. Spoilers! Salt thyme basil, oregano, celery salt, black pepper, mustard powder, paprika, garlic salt, powdered ginger, and white pepper. Huh. That's 12 ingredients. Hey now. I know for a fact that there are 11. Probably doesn't count salt, though. Never mind, that is 11. I counted a carriage return wrong. Oh boy. Well, now I know. See ya, Colonel Sanders. I'm gonna go take over the world.
A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window, realizing that it was very easy to just Google his recipe. And with the right business partner, I know I can. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly! Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're out on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. I know. Get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. He was just interested in spending some one, -on one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the, metallic, the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not sure, really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, Oliver. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be wrong. Oh my god, this game. Kill me. After a short argument, both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious! Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please! <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat! Aww. <laughs> you can get your swirly dipped, too. When do you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There's that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You got some nerve, Will, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Will, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What's he doing complimenting her? Hmm. What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was 
clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Will. I'm more than capable enough to speak for my Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. Burnzing! Kapow! I'm always interested in discussing the art of. See you inside, Will. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. Just something I found lying around. It appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it'll erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Can you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh -uh. Take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. Here's his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. Cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Oh. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, gruel flying off his face. Squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You'd better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professorial tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Will, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. See, before he can go on any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. 
yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep. Zzz, burp. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain, or off a cliff for all I care. Wing. The strongest shape. Blank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Bapsz. No amount of seasoning is gonna make me want to eat that <laughs> clank. Blank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Blank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam! I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam. You okay? Uh. Hey, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. <clears throat> I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> Not gonna saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but... I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest, anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review the menu for today. I'm gonna make a very special soup. I bet the Professor Dog is gonna love it up. While you were pep-talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. That's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will! Ah. A test of courage! Meh. A test of talent! And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed madman, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you will begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Will's famous chicken pot pie! After practicing for months, making this dish come second nature to you. You're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders! Will, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. Big into visualizing success. Looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake. The smell is slowly filling the space around me. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. Usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry. 
The last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. Decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. That decision gets hard to stick to. The oven timer goes off behind you! Okay, okay, you got me. Doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. Uh, Jorge Dang, what's good, man? You have stumbled into a game of, uh, what is it? Called I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. And we are just about to enter the final cook off. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. My nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. <laughs> and the second farty noise from Amanda. <laughs> but it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. Always loved country cooking. I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Oh, gross. Warm, flaky, gooey pie. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime, or a three days time. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing, just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes for their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers, Definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve upon something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. <clears throat> so this was really licensed by KFC. This one. Yeah, it came out like two weeks ago. Uh, the twenty. I have the. I have it pulled up here. The twenty fourth of September. This came out. Um. Besides just this, Wendy's actually just came out with a full fledged tabletop RPG. So. That's going to be coming up. I'm probably going to download that and go play that with the Pop Samurai Network crew some Thursday. Maybe not this Thursday, but some Thursday. <laughs> you think the Colonel is going to add Cheetos? That sounds likely. Cheetos, Doritos, something. Something well-branded. I don't know what we're going to play tomorrow. I'll have to bring in something. Did you guys ever play Sheriff of Nottingham? Back to the action. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Maybe we could play that tomorrow. That'd be fun. It's a good game. <laughs> Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster! 
Ban Ban flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and ride! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity as was foretold. <gasps> we mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. self district Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Going the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Wink. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms. He gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Yes, I like it. <laughs> uh, I believe in you, Will. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Will, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever! Turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient! Oh no. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spark Monster! Steve? Wait, what happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spark Monsters are many! I think Borco had the day off, but you've conjured Steve! And I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright! Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition! I love this stuff! It's better than on TV! You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me! Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Chris crossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to! I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. Don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in Spork Monster School. I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and when I woke up... Is that from Monsters, Inc.? Is that a Monsters, Inc. reference? Toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck! Having su suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. As much as I wanted to just give up. 
I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. I want to be the very best. Like no one ever was. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Will! You are the chosen one! You will avenge me! The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue! Sorry. Heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery! Begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. This feels like a huge waste of time. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Will. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Four episodes later, I will be at full power. That's right. A lot of screaming, too. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you've earned his support. I've been watching you, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and pulling with the punch. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. Aw, what a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual effort. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food meal? Time's up, students! With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Hop, Plank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad! It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs! May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, pranks, Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? Wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please, collect your final project. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow. Three whole days long. After days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in a savory soup. Go 
adorable. My word! It's so delicate! Is that a teeny tiny Naruto Maki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef! Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles! And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself! Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs! Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. A flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it's less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed, she gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Will, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over a smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin gel topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Ooh, ooh. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Uh. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this! I keep poking my tongue! It's qualified! A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Rejected! Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Who's qualified for glamour? Don't this give simplicity? This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student! Ashley, it's time to step up! Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. Beautiful. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Will? I told you it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition. At a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. The food cannot be eaten. It cannot be judged. You are disqualified! Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! 
And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either! This class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. Somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this... this... thing! And completely blow me away! In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced! It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class! You pass! You pass! And you pass! And you get a pass! Everyone gathers or Oh no! Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and the Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, students return for one last assignment. Get their groove on! The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation death. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef. Also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villain. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. Now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. The student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Spork, sorry, party monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. Red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh... Now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of such and such. The 
music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who's arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. Actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. Just begun, begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she's managed to surpass you in that regard. Yeah, empowerment! Woo! Rumspringer. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmate. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal! I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> what up, Pro Moose? This is I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator, and you're here right at the end of it, I think. Ah, the end? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Will? I couldn't help but wonder, was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy carried out by two cunning chefs? Or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this do si -do? Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tips of his feet. His hand, the hand of a master chef, so dedicated to the craft of fine cookery, so tender yet refined, so milky smooth, fingers like finely battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, knife, or even a spork. The night they reach for you. And through our feet, though our feet may tire of dancing, I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps to... Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen, as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life. You gasp! Could it be? Is he really saying... Me? And you? Together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No, even then, my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> the end! Yes! And that is indeed the end of I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating sim. Oh my god. That this was just so ridiculous. Um 
I don't know. I, I mean, I think the animation is just so good that it's hard to, you know, not like it. And it's so ridiculous. I think it probably would have taken about an hour to play had I not been narrating and doing voices. Um, but that was very fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to everyone who popped by and checked it out. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. It is free to play. It just came out on the 24th of September, but it's free to play on Steam. Uh, so go download it if you'd like uh, and give it a try. There are many decisions that I did not try, so I'm sure there are other ways to get through it. Um, and I'm going to say that uh, that's it for the night, because I can't think of a better way uh, to, to end the stream than by winning the heart of Colonel Sanders. So, um, yeah, this has been twitch.tv slash Willwalkie. Uh, I'm Will. You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming by. Sorry for the long hiatus, like I said, but uh, the honeymoon was awesome. I had a great time. Uh, I'll tell you guys more stories about it on Wednesday, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, be sure to hit twitch.tv slash Willwalkie Wednesday, 8 central, and I'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Good night.